All right, guys, it's week six in the campaign. Playoffs loom on the horizon. For the first time ever, there are four teams tied first. You and your companions are out of mistakes. You're out of second chance. So Whippo attacks. Wait. Whippo picks Ringar? And he attacks. We're not even in combat yet. I want to bring in my special character. That should be fine, this right? This is a level eight campaign. Like you can't swap. have a... I would like to lane swap. Okay, why do you want to roll swap? It makes no sense. I just want to experiment, mix things up. Look, I really don't think you understand the ramifications of roll swapping at this point in a campaign. Mate, I do get it. Bot lane in the mid lane, mid lane in the bot lane. Hey, if he gets the lane swap, I think I should get to bring in my special character. Okay, yeah, whatever. Just read it to us. Okay, Tell me so what's going on. Look at this. He has a dark and mysterious past. Super edgy, right? Super edgy, I know. He had to be drafted away for the military. It was tragic. But now he's back and he's been training for all these years. All you gotta do is give him a chance. Okay, so, just, give, just me, give me the shit. Give me the shit. You're shake. gonna love it. You're gonna love him. Yeah, I knew it. It he's, says forgiven at the top I'm, of this. Like, he's so underleveled. He's four levels he's behind. Come on, dude. No. Just trust me. Okay, sure, sure. Roll dexterity. Here we go. Here we go. That's a one. That's a one. That's gotta be good, right? That's good. That sounds. Critical fail, what? I'm afraid. You, uh, you lose seven games. Seven? I yeah. lose seven. I lost. Oh. Holy shit. So hot in here. Wait, where are you guys' costumes? What the? Unbelievable. Look, I love it. You're getting into character. It's great. Okay, what you have to do is decide where on Summoner's Rift you're gonna you're gonna attack. Okay, I'll go bot. Okay, okay. So you got three players down there. Um, if you could roll for the bot lane dive. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that's a 14. That's a good score. Um, we'll give you the plus four modifier because Kazi is your bot laner and that he's rookie of the split material, so he has that passive. Uh, you get three kills, and uh, Humanoid dies. What? Why? He wasn't even there. Yeah, it just says he dies. Fnatic do Baron. Okay, wait, what? Whippo and Fnatic wait, How are you, how are you a Baron, Baron now? Hillisang comes too. They always go together. Okay, sure, sure. Whippo and Hillisang do Baron. Uh, roll a D2. What's a D2? Uh, it's this coin. It's Hillisang. If you could flip that, that'd be great. Tails. Yeah, that's a failure. Um, Hillisang uh, dies, and your entire team dies as well. Okay, I guess I'll go Baron 2 then. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you set up a perfect triangle of vision. You have incredible objective control. You killed the enemy jungler. Can I just roll? Humanoid is put. No, you have to set the scene. You have to set the scene. Humanoid is pushing in a side lane. He's got the wave control. You kill the enemy jungler, and you go for Baron. Uh, give me an objective control roll. Is a 20 good? Oh, that's, that's the best you can get. That's amazing. Nat 20. Um, you get the Baron, you get out, everyone escapes, uh, but Humanoid dies. What? Yeah, says he dies. I would like to roll for draft. Okay. Give me your 16. Oh, that's really good. Oh, no, wait, you've got the, um, you've got the grabs draft modifier here. That's a minus 15. So that's actually a, a failure. That's a one. <laughs> um, Yankos picks Sejuani. Dude, you suck. And Humanoid dies. That's a man, dude. This game, I quit. I'm just saying what it says here. Hey, what's up, guys? Can I play? Oh, yeah, we started 30 minutes ago, man. Please, 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 please. Okay, I guess you could be Origin. Yes, Deficio. Welcome to Berlin, Germany, home of the best region in the world. There, I said it. We're about to roll initiative for the encounter. That is week six, 
and the stakes are through the roof here in the LEC with four teams tied for first, an intense race for playoffs on the horizon, and we'll see if XL Esports can catch up to Rogue in our first game. Over the next 25 minutes, we'll tell you all you need to know about the top four teams. A very old friend makes a long-awaited return. I'm Quickshot, and I'm joined today by Yamato and Vedius. Gentlemen, welcome back. Did you enjoy your D&D session? Yeah, it was really insightful. I learned a lot. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thing. Okay, if you've lived under a rock for the past few weeks, then you may be finding out uh, it's about time to jump into the race. The LEC is closer than ever, and for the first time in history, four teams are tied after 10 games each. It is setting us up for a massive fight at the top. I think it's beautiful because the scoreline might be similar between these teams, but the story of how they got there and how they play is very, very different. We have some unique teams at the top. Yeah, and I think that it's... It's not just a matter of some of the top teams are underperforming. We actually have a very competitive top half of the bracket right now with a lot of good teams in Europe that are all fighting for that first seed. Yeah, and there's only two wins that separate first from seventh, right? So the playoff race is looking pretty defined as far as the top seven are concerned. Mad Lions and Rogue, they currently hold the last two spots of that sort of, you know, playoff race. I want to see if XL can catch up. I want to see what XL can do. Uh, there's also going to be a brand new patch this week, Yamato, uh, and a very close relative of Vedius will give some more insight later into ReadyCheck. And Yamato, I do want to go back to something you just uh, mentioned, talking about the top four teams, talking about the storylines, how they got here. Let's uh, dive into that after we hear what Reckless had to say about the top four teams on Euphoria. <laughs> okay, there's like there's a lot for me to unpack here because when you just look at the scoreboards and you like two times speed through the VODs, it's hard to appreciate the nuances. So Fnatic, G2, Misfits, OG, all tied at the top. Um, I f the league is in a wild, wild state. What's your what's your take on like the league as a whole right now, Reckless? Um, I would say even though we're all together like that, there's still a clear difference between every team. Not in terms of skill or anything. It's just everyone has like their own very specific idea of how to make things work. And I think you could see it very, very like clearly versus us and OG, for example, where we knew kind of exactly what they wanted to do and we made a very specific plan for it. And uh, I think a lot of teams are kind of trying to do the same thing against G2, where they also have like a very clear idea of how they want to play and people are trying their absolute hardest to counter it. So even though we're all at the same level, I would say, of skill, it's like we have a very different idea of what that skill is. Mm. Definitely recommend checking out the rest of the episode with Reckless. He speaks very frankly, earnestly, and honestly about some of the challenges he's faced on a personal level, as well as giving his insights into the top four teams. And they include G2, Fnatic, Misfits, and Origin. I've challenged Yamato and Vedius to take a deep dive on their play styles. And I'm going to ask everyone at home to vote. Who do you think is the best team right now? Spam G2. FNC, MSF, or OG in chat. And after these two have explained all four teams, you're going to answer the same question. Let's start with G2. Going to ask the obvious question. They're one and three in the last two weeks, so that means they suck now, right? Yeah, that, that in fact means <laughs> that That's they what suck. It means. Of course, everyone needs to slow down a little bit. I think we need to take a step back and appreciate the fact that them going 6-0 should also be very surprising. They made a huge roster swap with caps and perks, and expectations not only for this team, but for many of us were that it would take them time to ramp up. I feel like what we're now seeing is the result of that. There's still some weaknesses that need to be shored up. And while other teams have rapidly gotten better, G2 have kind of gotten to sat on their laurels a little bit just because of how successful their first part of the split was. I think also on top of that, it's very clear that G2 is trying to improve their early game. Usually that was a weakness last split, but they got away with so much because in the mid to late game, they usually caught up somehow. On top of that, the meta right now is very defined about who drafts better. So G2 can't use that spiciness to get an advantage. Right now, it's all about the draft, and G2 can easily pick it up. Okay, let's also talk just very briefly, but like G2, we can clearly see weaknesses. You know, last year, they had this like armor plot armor where if they got serious, they'd beat anybody. Is the same true right now? I think the question is, can you target Caps, for example? We've seen games yeah. where he kind of runs it down. We've seen Wunder in the last game against Mad Lions being caught over and over, and LeBlanc was at a position where she just took over the game. I think these are the key points. If you figure out a good draft, it could be beautiful. Okay, talking about good drafts, Fnatic, uh, Vedius claimed in our prep and our research that they are the best team in the league right now. Tell me why. Well, I think a large part of it is they seem to have a really good read on the meta, and 
they're way more willing to play things that I don't think we would have seen from them in the past. We talk a lot about Fnatic in the context of playing through bot lane. Often, Whippo would be left on an island, and sometimes he'd have some crazy picks, but, you know, that was kind of it. Now it feels like everyone on Fnatic is flexing their creative muscles, and they're able to really delve into the deep champion pools that they do have to bring out some really impressive drafts that are winning them big games. I think on top of that, this kind of balance that they've struck. In the beginning, there was a lot of over-aggression, but I think that put, sets you up to kind of hone that down, and eventually when you reach that trust point where the team trusts Bipo, trusts Selfmade, trusts Hillisang, you can see a united Fnatic that looks stronger than ever so early on in the split. We expect this, but not already in week five. But what did you expect from Selfmade? I thought his debut on Fnatic in the opening weeks was a little lackluster, but he's definitely stepped up in the last few weeks. What's your take? I think the, the key takeaway with Selfmay was on SK was phenomenal. And being surrounded by great players, great lanes, all of a sudden we can see a diverse Fnatic. Past Fnatics were always about the bot lane, play around bottom side. Now Selfmay can play around top side, around mid, and you can never really expect what's coming. It almost feels like to me G2 and Fnatic have kind of story swapped last year to this year. I want right. to explore this idea a little bit more. Um, and of course, let's talk about some other new kids on the block, Misfits. I don't think you can say it's luck anymore. I don't think other teams are disrespecting them. How do you win seven games in a row unless you're actually good? Yeah, exactly. I think Misfits have showcased a great understanding of the fundamentals. I think they know exactly how to play through the early game. And while I think right now they are pretty top focused, their bot lane is getting much better at knowing how to play on the weak side of the map. And all of this is brought together by the man in the jungle, Razork. Frost was someone who was adamant that this guy was going to come in and be impressive. And in the first week, he missed a Jarvan Flash EQ. He didn't have the best impression, but rapidly he's becoming one of our most standout junglers that we have so far this split. I think the key thing for me that stands out with Misfits is that the early game, beautiful. Razork always finds an advantage. But then the transition into 10 minutes, they always know how to switch it on and always carry that lead into something greater. Yeah, but gentlemen, you haven't talked about vintage, legacy, 2015 level Febovit. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing a lot of fans also pegging him for one of the like fun runners for MVP. He has to have a huge impact as well. Yeah, for sure. It's been talks. Perks, for example, even told said that he's the second best mid lane in the league. Right now, when the mid lane is kind of iffy all over the place, that's up for grabs. And Fabivan is making a strong case for himself. I can't wait to see how this team performs now that we're in the rematch territory. They're playing Fnatic later today. They got smashed last time round. Nocturne top broke my man's heart. <laughs> yes, I want to see what's going to happen. And let's turn our attention to the fourth, but not last team yet, Origin. They're not the kings of the draft anymore. We've proclaimed Fnatic own that, that, that right. But Yamato, maybe talk to me a little bit about what else is changing and happening for Origin. I think the key thing about Origin, we always talk about them in the context of winning the whole split. I think the biggest weakness that always stands out to me is their mid game. Always slows down, they don't have the same pace and speed like a Fnatic and a G2. A lot of the drafts manage to carry them through that portion and whenever the drafts look weaker, it kind of looks rough. See, I'm more of the, of the wagon that they've only lost teams in the top four. And depending on your perspective, I think that's a good thing for Origin because, sure, their drafts are getting exploited, but that's the only situation they lose. To me, they look very convincing because they are very good at coming into games with a plan and being able to execute upon that plan effectively. They struggle when that plan suddenly starts to break yeah. apart. And that's where I think teams like Fnatic and G2 have an edge over them because that creative aspect of, oh, we can't find a win condition, then we'll make one, doesn't exist right now for a team like Origin. But now, Vettis, I lean in the camp that OG are the only team in the top four teams tied for first that have a negative win-loss against the other teams. So I see that in a bad light. But if I understand correctly, you believe if OG fix some of their drafting, that will balance it out and they have the ability to win. I think the Origin should be looked at in a very positive light and consistently be seen as a threat. They have superstar carries in every position. They, on average, have very good drafts. It just seems that against some of the top teams, the drafting isn't quite the same in terms Got of it. the creativity and flexibility. And while we do see some niddly, some Carthuses here and there, they need to be willing to flex that extra creative muscle if they still want to be able to challenge the top, as Yamato's saying, and fight for that uh, title at the end of the split. Yeah, and of course, last week, we crowned Alfari the mid-split MVP as yep. well. Cannot be understated the impact that he's having on the league and his team. I asked earlier for all of you to be voting who you felt was the best team right now, and I will be checking in after I ask Yamato and Vedius, who is the number one team out of these four right now? Right now, I think Fnatic is the most well-rounded team, but the biggest question marks always. Last week, DraftKings 10.4. Maybe we can crown new DraftKings after this weekend. Ooh. Well, I 
they seem to be with both Yamato and the fans and the thinking that Fnatic right now is the best team. We do see quite a lot of G2 votes, and you can see that Misfits and Origin kind of sit OG down the bottom. OG is blue, Misfits is red. So yeah. it is one, two, three, four. The colors are just misaligned. A lot of doubt in the OG camp right now <laughs> from the fans. I mean, you can't blame them, right? When well, you of watch not. the games, um, it is easier for my gold brain to poke holes in an OG playstyle than the other three teams. So that's where my doubt comes from as well. It's, it, I guess the way I look at it is OG is only losing to top teams, right? Whereas G2 lost to Schalke. Fnatic have struggled. I forget who they lose to, but they're not Mad losing. Mad Lions. Yeah. yeah, they lost to Mad Lions. Like, these random losses don't actually exist for Origin. So yeah. they have a standard, which is right now they're not as good as the top three. But that but just makes them fourth. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that just means they have something to build upon already halfway through the split. It makes a lot of sense. Yumato, how big is the changes on 10.4? You've mentioned it two or three times already. These teams have to adapt, and this is going to be a turning point. Honestly, it's quite hefty. I think we'll see a lot more changes. Soraka is a big one, of course. Okay. Well, look, let's say goodbye to Soraka and Yamato. Introduce us to 10.4. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Soraka is nerfed. Let's rejoice for a moment. But still, you know, very strong in the Super Bowl. We might see it there. Speaking of the bot lane, teams are beginning to figure out that the parade of buffs for Kalista are starting to add up. Kalista Tarek is something we first saw in the LCK and now also from Mad Lions. It has a great lane phase and great scaling because of the Tarek ultimate. If you're looking to counter it, you must play the likes of Syndra, Cassiopeia and Tresh for the Tarek. Senna is also making a resurgence. I predict it to be 100% pick ban in the coming weekend, as Cloud9 showcased that you can just play it as a support of the lane, eating minions with Tom Kench and spreading the gold around, as Senna after 10.3 gets more stacks than ever if she does not last hit the minions. Rest assured, there are many more exciting combinations than this boring Tom Kench, so pay attention to it. Orn and his tank bros are getting buffed. The Bami Cinder class of items have an extra bit of punch in terms of damage, which helps trades, scaling, and also jungle clear speed. This is a buff to the current tanks that are being played, said Juani, Zach, as well as Orn, and it might give some spotlight on some new up-and-comers. Another buff is, of course, the Caitlyn. Caitlyn got her attack speed buff from level 1 and onwards, which equates to a dagger, and that is enough to bring the Caitlyn players out from under the rocks. There is risk with Caitlyn, because if you do not manage to snowball, the Drake fights against stronger ultimates are going to be quite troublesome. On top of that, you know, you can add another one buff in the book, as Exos is stronger, which makes Spellbook stronger. Why not, I guess? And then the Garen and the Nas and the Darius Flexius! You son of a gun! Yamato! I see that they've got you pushing pencils now. You know how it is, man. I know how it is. Now get to the chopper. I'll be back. Yeah, you better be. You better be. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Flexius. He is now back. And after filming the new Avengers movie, I am ready. Now, a bit of a spoiler alert. I arm wrestle the Hulk and he loses. All oh, self five. Anyway, I'm here to break down some of the best flex picks on patch 10.4. Starting off with our boy Orn. Now, Orn may look short, but that doesn't matter when he can flex all over the shop. Legends say his legs are so strong they could squat an entire region into winning. Them thick thighs are gonna give him a strong laning phase thanks to his safe wave clear and good gank setup. Combined with the great scaling that his ultimate brings. Combined again with the free stuff that he gives you. This buff bro is a flexor to get in your squad. Now, on your screen is none other than the aspect of war, a being that even the darken could not destroy. Someone so mighty, even the gods became his enemy. But enough about me. Let's talk about this guy, my Baker Bro Pantheon. Now, like a good push up, he can be flexed in a pretty much any role. You can play him in the top lane. You can play him in the jungle. Hell, you can play him in mid lane. You can play him in bot lane. You can play him wherever you damn well please. This guy is the second flexiest person after me, Flexius. 
Oh, my muscles are too big for this. Damn. Now, his ability to tower dive is extremely strong thanks to his reliable CC and the damage mitigation from his E. It makes him inflexible. That's invaluable, but stronger. Now, on to our final flex pick. The final Flexosaurus Resk is none other than my best employee, Set. While his part-time job might be flexing in the pit, his main role is flexing on the rift. He's being played in the tap and mid lane. Rumor has it, though, that he's making his way down to support. Now, a fella flexer told me that Tom said he was looking kind of chubby, which set obviously took very personally, because you can see him, like, he's doing all those sit-ups all the time. I mean, just look at him. I mean, all right, his abs could do with some work, doing a couple extra countries. But anyway, anyway, <coughs> a fella who's hella good at sending up dives and suplexing scrubs into the arms of his bros, making him a flex pick worth playing. Now, that's going to do it for me. It's time to watch some big flexers talk smack as they face up tomorrow. Peace. At this point in the league, the top is no longer clear. You can make an argument for any of these teams. And Rogue and Origin don't just have something to prove to themselves, they have something to prove on the standings. Honestly, I just really want to win a split. I've always had the belief that I will be the best at some point, but I've never actually won a split. So it's just been a matter of trying to like keep this belief within me, despite uh, disappointing results. Alfari has come into his own. He is one of these diamonds in the rough that has been polished up into that final jewel. This guy is smashing records in the top lane. He is a front runner for MVP of the split, and if he keeps at this pace, he will be MVP. We haven't seen numbers like this since 2017. All right, Alfari flashed away from the supreme display of talent. He's still got damage down. Nemesis is being eaten away by the Cannon Barrage. He stays alive long enough. Alfari in the 1v2. It's that type of fire that really thrives in these young squads. Finn, I think, fits in that category of constantly make crazy plays so that one day those are just the standard ones. I don't think anyone in our team feels like we've finished our journey. I haven't won a LCS or LEC title, and I really want to win one. So we're just going to keep going until we get it. I want to be the handsome that shines. That's going to be caught up from the flag and drag. The show stop is inside the 50 field, still available. It's secured by Misfits. Now it's a two for one. Hunt Summer is ripping through Misfits. And Hunt Summer closes up. Finn is in the back line. Inex almost down. That's one, that's two. Larson and Finn, it's just the rogue show here. Finn gets another connection onto Norwax. Can't quite find the third, but he flashes forward. It's a double. It's Finn. He's 20 years old, then. You can throw a stone at any point in this map, and you can hit a matchup that's worth talking about. Zerse has gone back for those already. Flash away with the follow. Flash, Nuka's gonna jump in. Will it be enough? Ticking, 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 and he's gone! Oh, Femi! Hops the stopwatch. Forbidden jumping forward. Larson jumping back. Larson gets him! Here he is! Oh! Upset with a QSS flash! My motivations are the same as when I was a rookie. I still want to prove that I'm the best and I want to show it every time I play. The time for second chances is very quickly evaporating. The league is much more stacked and it's a much closer race than anyone anticipated. There are no more mistakes. I'm back. The main event of the week. A battle for the ages between two top contenders. Will Finn play something other than Aatrox? Will Alfari bounce back from that horrible Soraka game? Will Origin reclaim their draft kingdom? All these questions will be answered in 28 hours. So, I leave the question to my analysts. Finn versus Alfari, Trevor. <laughs> um, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, we've got this backwards. My name was on the prompter, but I think you definitely did it better than I could have nailed done. It. That was it. awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a really hyped matchup after the discussion we just had. And I'm somewhat jokingly pinning OG as the fourth place team, which is not my actual belief. 
I want to see what Rogue can do. I think the pressure is a little bit more on them to yeah. step up. I think uh, Rogue is a pretty interesting team. Obviously, we're going to be talking a lot more about them, but the last time they went up against Origin, they didn't really hold a candle to them. It felt like Origin was just a better version of what Rogue tried to do. And we'll get to see if Rogue has made enough improvements since the last time they met to be able to take the win this time. Exactly. Rogue just took down one of the top team's misfits and will be facing off against OG later today. Let's take a look at the rest of the games. Be sure to join us for game four. And of course, uh, Fnatic versus Misfits will be happening today. The match of the week is tomorrow. Two of our first place teams are going head to head, and we'll see which one of them will sit on top of the table. But I'm going to ask my analysts of the other three matchups, which is top versus bottom, give me the highest likelihood for an upset to happen, meaning that the lower ranked team will yeah, win. Yeah, it's the G2 game, Trevor. It's definitely the G2 game. Or what percentage odds are you giving? Because you're giving me a sarcastic look here. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where you're like, there's no way G2 would lose that game. They lost to Schalke. Which actually then increases shot. the likelihood, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, they seem to quite regularly lose to the teams that you very least expect them to. So that's the game I'm keeping my eyes on. Honestly, I think it's it's so hard to believe anything. It's like the first thing that came to mind was like a stupid joke about origin and upset, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, with what? What? I'm with Venius. I'm with Nailed the delivery in all the segments up to now. Don't lower yourself to my level with those puns. <laughs> the stakes are high from the get-go as Rogue and XL Esports are facing off in game one. For XL, they have two crucial games this week. Let's check in with Draco Sound, their coach, to hear more. Thank you very much, Quickshot. I am joined by Young Buck. Now, Young Buck, it's been an up and down split for Excel so far this season. You guys have beaten a lot of the bottom teams, but you've yet to find a win against the current top four. Uh, top four. Can you talk to me a little bit about why you've kind of fallen short against some of the top teams? Yeah, I think we got really close against most of the top four teams. Um, only G2 pretty much uh, smacked us. However, it just felt like we were missing that little bit extra that we were just missing in the games because we often had gold leads, but we didn't know how to close it out. It's something we've been working on, but we find out that every week on stage we find a new weakness or something that's holding us back and that we have to work on. And yeah, that's just a really long process. And I still think coming from 10th to now being in uh, seventh place or like five and five is still really good. And I think in the second half, and especially this week, is where we're going to try to contest the top five. So big expectations for this week. You talk about constantly finding new problems, but do you feel like you've been able to iron out the previous ones if you've discovered at a reasonable pace? Yeah, I think after last week's games, we found a really big breakthrough and something that we can improve on that will massively improve our mid game. And it has shown in our practice as well that it's been really effective. So now we have, that we have Rogue and Mad Lions on the schedule, two teams for playing for, again, for that playoff spot, you know, it's time to show it. All right, absolutely. When you look um, kind of at the meta at 10-4, there's obviously a lot of changes. Can you talk briefly, not giving away any secrets, but do you feel like this has helped solve any of the problems that the team has? Is it mostly the same? How does it affect the team overall? I think a lot of it is the same. It just feels there's five or six champions that are so strong that they have to not uh, go through the ban phase. So I think all of teams will just start trading a lot of those uh, picks and we'll we'll see what the, what the priorities are because I think every team probably has one small different priority here and there. So yeah, I think it's a really exciting week. It's also scary being the first team to play in this patch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to see what your special pick is, what kind of spice Excel can bring to the table. Good luck on your games ahead of you, and thank you again so much for talking to me, young buddy. Thank you, too. Back to you guys at the desk. Rogue and Excel, two of the newest teams in the league. They are fighting for their lives in the race for playoffs. I really like hearing from Young Buck in a fairly candid and honest uh, review, saying that, yes, they have been fairly competitive against some of the teams. But frankly, that's all we've seen. One win separates them in the standings, and this is going to be crucial when we look forward. XL, Rogue today, Mad tomorrow. Both of these games are important, and the reason I want to set these stakes so high is the story of the teams above them is one of progression and development. But the story of these two teams is that of stagnation. There's only four weeks left in the split. I need to see more. I think with the... Come on, Yamaha, it's the time. It's time? It's okay. The time. Wait, 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 wait. It's time. So you, what you, what you do talk do about tickets? stagnation, and we've got to talk about the hype train that we were building for XL to start a split. I was someone that These said... These are our tickets. I said at the beginning, I think they could be challenging top four. I don't believe it anymore. Oh, I'm we're, off, we're I'm off, off the train. We're I'm off. off the train. Okay, we're tearing I'm off up the train. tickets. But what's crazy, though, is it only takes one week, and then we'll regret that the, <laughs> the, 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 the tickets are ruined. Yeah, that was a monthly <laughs> ticket. It's not <laughs> like a cheap ticket that I just <laughs> ripped up. But just, <laughs> just to highlight the point is, like, sure, Excel is behind with the scoreline. They've oh, we've always talked about their early game. The mid game lacking. The late game lacking. The main thing is here, one week can change it all, but it's time for them to prove something. They need to prove something. To me, Excel are very similar to Mad Lions in that a lot of their games are very heavily decided by what happens in the laning phase okay. and in what form is Mickey in. 
the mid laner, because this guy has had some very inconsistent performances, but I think week five was probably one of his worst of the split. Dying 1v1 on Orn, getting then solo killed by an Orn on Vayne. Like, <laughs> so much has happened in this week that hurt his team so much. He is just a player that is too variable in I his level it. of performance now, Vegas, that it hurts this team We have much. 60 seconds to quickly touch on Rogue. We've gone very heavy on Excel, but I feel similar feelings when I think about Rogue. Hit me quick, what do you think? Well, I think as a team, they have great fundamentals but a lot of their leads come from individual laners building advantages during the laning phase and then they know how to close out cleanly. It's just that point in the mid game where they seem to make that crucial mistake that a lot of teams are able to exploit. To echo that sentiment, I agree completely with, with Juvelius. I think Rogue is just okay at everything. They don't yes. have anything that stands out. They have some draft issues. Will Finn play something else than Aatrox? That's the question that they need to solve coming into this game because it's getting closer and closer. And of course, I think I have to reiterate and summarize. We think there's a lot of potential and good things about these teams. But they are the sixth and seventh teams right now, fifth, sixth, seventh. We're not looking them in top four. And you've also got to remember that teams like Mad and Misfits are showing consistent growth week on week. But Rogue and XL, I feel like we're seeing the same thing. This is why we talk about stagnation, because the young blood of yeah. the LEC is fired up and ready to take those top spots. And these two teams need to keep up. Is taking the top spot. Misfits is a prime example of that tied for first. The race for playoffs is closer than ever, where everyone can beat everyone. Every game is must win, and nobody knows how it's going to end. Let's see where Week 6 takes us right now.